Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. I'm pretty sure I've walked around this piece of water before. This is Danes Hill Lake in North Nottinghamshire. It's a nature reserve, predominantly used for waterfowl and boating, believe it or not. And it's the perfect location to look for some mushrooms and walk the dogs in the morning before work. So now that that's done, let's go in to the brewery and see what today is gonna bring us. We have arrived. And the first thing I'm doing is replacing that leaky valve I showed you on the other video uh, last week or so. Now, these ball valves are just from Tool Station. They're cheap for water and gas. But if you have a look inside, just look at the condition on that side of the valve because it's been exposed to PAA and paracetic acid will corrode soft metals and it really kind of has gone to town that you can't see as well but that is completely cratered like that gives you a bit of an indication look at the gap there you can see it's really eating away at that so once it gets in it really gets in I'd be interested to see what the other side looks like and if we come down to the bottom here you can see there is the hole and that hole does indeed go straight through so whilst on the outside these look like they are made out of stainless steel they're not they are brass and copper now I've got a replacement I've got two actually I've got this one which I know is brass this one I'm not 100% sure if it is, probably is, but they are jelly bean parts, they're about a fiver, we've got what, well over a year out of that last one, so £5 a year for a consumable like that, ain't too bad. So what I'm going to do is just pull the bottom pipe, see they're the same depth as well, so I just need to change the pipe work. And we'll be able to put this straight back in with no other modifications and get another year out of it. Maybe it's worth sourcing a stainless steel one, but for this version of the cask wash that I've got down there, probably not. Simply because I intend to make a fully stainless steel version at some point in the future, but only when we know exactly what we need to do on it. I think I need four tanks. Rinse caustic rinse acid and uh, that's probably how it's going to look when I build it four tanks four pumps for everything basically so let's zip this off I think I need a bigger spanner oh it might might get in there oh we're in we are in like sin oh god fingers down a chalkboard ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Sounds like a donkey. It's nearly Christmas, I suppose, isn't it? We're starting the nativity early. Mary, Joseph and the wee donkey. Jesus as well. Missed him out there, didn't I? So, I'll just loosen this off. It's going to drop on the floor, is it? Probably is. There we go. So... The olive looks in good condition, actually. There's a little bit of verdigris there, which is, of course, from dissolving away the copper slightly. But I'm just going to reuse that. I could clip it off and put another one on, but it looks like that's made a good enough seal for it not to have been damaged by the parasitic and then we wanted to have a look at the other end so if I just open up the vice jaws a touch and I use them as my other hand aha so we can see the tank facing side of the bow valve absolutely consumed by the acid now the other side which only sees the flow and often sees rinse water is in quite good condition so that kind of tells me come on let's get some light in the situation 
it kind of tells me that uh, we can expect to see at least a year out of this bore valve and uh, I don't need to change it until I build build the new version you know you could even do half a year that way and turn it round <laughs> that's tight in it that's too tight anyway let's get all this tightened up I'll just throw that straight in the bin and we'll get this one tightened back up and fitted into the cask washer so here we are at the cask wash and I've managed to wiggle this into position just have to tighten up this side which has on it um, a threaded coupler and then over here we have what everyone's familiar with a standard John Guest fitting which are actually the best so one handed I can't quite get into there but I'll just get a pair of grips to tighten that up all the way but that should sort that out and then we can start to fill the tank up again so there we are repair repaired uh, this side probably needs filling up as well but another job bites the dust ladies and gentlemen so the reason I need this working today is because we are rapidly requiring more packaging so all of these casks on the floor here are the bogget hole ones I've had up in storage on the mezzanine and some of them are absolutely disgusting inside so I filled them all with a little bit of hyperquest excuse me egg sandwich repeating on me a little bit there so they've got a bit of hyperquest in there and we're slowly just rotating them around imagine a clock face kind of putting them at 12 3 6 and 9 and then we'll stand them up on the bottom and then on the top and they're having a good soak and what that does is it removes all the tannins and staining and beer stone and well there isn't beer stone in there it's just mainly staining and uh, cleans these up and on the inside they look pretty brand new uh, but on the outside they're always going to look a little bit beaten up and then at some point in the future I will look at popping our banding colours on there because there's nothing wrong with these casks once they're cleaned up they'll be fine to use probably in circulation outside of the brewery actually they cost me very little 50 quid or 70 quid I paid for something like a hundred but there was a combination of aluminium steel and plastic still got a load of plastic ones if you want any uh, they'll need a clean up as well but they'll be fine nobody's come to collect them yet first come first served if you look out the back window you'll see them there but the pins I might be keeping the firkins I definitely don't want but uh, yeah all from the now liquidated company called Boggart Hole out of Manchester way and we bought these on an auction website and that gave us the rights to all of the Boggart Hole casks that are out there in circulation so I didn't know we'd bought that but Kegwatch got in touch with me I said we've got a load of your casks in our yard and I said no you haven't because we've not sent anything out and they went oh yes we have you own the bother old casks now because you bought the auction right the rights at auction and I was like oh I thought I was just buying the casks turns out I bought loads of these apparently there's still about a hundred out in circulation somewhere so somebody's got free cask usage out there but I've got what I need at the moment so there we go um, we are waiting for however brand new kegs to come from NDL Europe Limited who haven't given us the best customer service of late they've been on order since June and we've been given the runaround in the past month so yeah that's another story altogether doing some measuring there gems oh. hey guess what I've made a new friend oh yeah oh I had quick I had yeah in the so 
I'll not show you the address because it's not up to me to, to share it with you. But uh, we'll get a little bit of this in. Raw Culture Kombucha. Never had this before. Raw Culture Limited. These guys are based out of Aberdeen. They've got a website. Check them out. Anyway, I've been working, well, um, talking, should I say, to Chris, who runs the joint, and uh, helping him with a labelling machine that he's just bought, and some other bits, sharing a bit of information, because I've got two of those label, MT50 labelling machines, and out of the kindness of his heart, he sent me these. So apparently it's good for breakfast. So I'm thinking about popping one. This is a Mangosaurus Raw Culture Mango Kombucha. What else have we got? It's very s good branding. That reminds me of a Brewdog beer though. Do you know what I mean? It's the colour isn't it? Oh and, and that label's a little bit like a Brewdog beer. But yeah it's a strong brand. And uh, this one is Hoppical Punch, this is the hopped kombucha, he did mention that in a message to me recently. And this is Lemon Drop, so a lemony kombucha. Never had one before in my life, so I'm very intrigued to see what this is like. Oh, is this a double box? It is. Well, let me just undo this and uh, we'll come back to see what's in the other half. It must be somebody's birthday. Oh my goodness, would you look at that. So these are the original kombucha from Raw Culture. I can't believe you sent me a full case. Thanks a lot, mate. But I'm definitely intrigued to get one of these cracked open. It's carbonated. Um, I don't think they can carbonate it. I think he's getting these packaged pre-carved. Uh, this has got green tea in it. Cane sugar, filtered water, black tea, kombucha culture, and uh, some flavour extracts. Well, why not? Let's get this in a can and give it a freaking whirl. Thanks again, bud. Wow. That's not what I expected to see at all. Gemma's just said exactly what I was thinking. We thought it was going to look milky. Not clear like that. Anyway, let's have a little sniff. Smells like tea. I can definitely get the tea on that. It's fizzy, effervescing. Oh, I'm so curious. Right, let's go in for the taste. Well, that is lovely. I totally did not expect that to be as nice as it is. It's quite sweet, not overly so. It's very, very refreshing. The carbonation definitely helps. And then there's a little light note of iced tea in the background. Do you want to try it, Gem? I'm honestly not setting you up. It is lovely. It is really nice. It does smell like tea. It does. That's quite refreshing. <laughs> it blew me away. It's quite nice. Yeah, wow. It's not what I expected at all. No, it's not what I expected. I thought it was going to be a milky white colour. Maybe we're thinking of kefir or kefir or ke something like that, not kombucha. I think that's what I had probably in mind, the kefir. Because you use kefir grains to make that kind of stuff. Which is like a milky drink, I believe. Mm. But this is not that. Well, get yourselves over to Raw Culture, guys, and get this ordered. This is something completely new to me, and I'm very pleased that I got to try it. This is the hop-infused one, actually, Gem. I didn't see that on the label. Oh, it says, it does say hop infusions, yeah, yeah I almost missed that. I'll, I'll get more tea from it, though, to be fair. But very, very nice indeed. 
And oh yeah, he's got little hops on the label, look. How did I miss that? It's because I'm looking through the viewfinder on the camera, aren't I? Well, well done, mate. What a great product. Ah, perfect. Something else I thought worth mentioning, boys and girls, is... Remember last year when I asked everybody to vote for us? Well, it yeah, only kind of bloody worked, didn't it? We managed to pick up last week, or the week before last, as you've probably seen on my other social media accounts, won the Best Artisan Business Award for the brewery, and we also won Best Hospitality Award for North Nottinghamshire for the brew shed. So I'd say a massive thanks to everybody who voted for us, and it was a really good night and great to be recognised for what we do outside of the beer world, if you know what I mean. This is more the business world rather than the uh, the beer industry world where most of our other awards have come from. In fact, all of them, SEBA Awards, Camera Awards. This is the first one that's won on merit for business. Voted by you guys, of course. But nonetheless, it still counts. So, seeing as I'm going through a period of shameless self-promotion, then I may as well point out that as of later on this week, if you go across to harrisonsbrewery.com, you will be able to buy our new pint glasses, which I'm about to move now. So if you've not seen them, while that cast wash is turned off, I'll quickly reach into here and grab one. We'll just check out those little beauties. So this is the robot fermenter designed by Tortec Info for us, which is now our logo. It needs a name though, definitely needs a name. And then on the back or the front, whichever way you want to look at it, we've got Harrison's Brewery and the brew shed logo and then if you look in the middle down the bottom there we've got a Harrison's Brewery etched head start in the bottom of the glasses so they really are all singing all dancing for cast and cask and craft keg they'll do the job for both check it out harrisonsbrewery.com they should be up by the end of the week they should be up now actually well, you have to ask, what kind of world are we living in? Right, let me just explain what's happened. We've uh, just had an email from our wholesalers, uh, who supply us with a lot of food for the kitchen, okay, saying that last week's payments bounced and they're not going to deliver today. Which, by the way, they've had a whole week to tell us that that payment's bounced, so that's a bit uh, suspicious. So, I think I'll come round and speak to Tom. Because we did change the card on the account last week, because I had a new card. So we changed the card, so I thought maybe it's a problem with that. I come to go round to the pub, bearing in mind that I've been here three or four times today, and Tom's in, and the... Uh, the gate's been padlocked from the outside. So I unlock the padlock and come in. I notice we've had a beer delivery. So the beer delivery man from Beer Metro has been to our place, seen that the, seen that the gate's open, he knows the code, then he's delivered the beer and then he's locked everybody in. Lunatic. So from the back of that, I come in, go upstairs, tell Tom what's happened with breaks, and we have a look online. The account won't let us log in online. What's going on there? I don't know. So we can't log in. Try the phone number, no answer. Tried our rep's phone number, no answer. Uh, tried the live web chat, no response. So how can we put this correction in? You know, how can we correct this, this payment mistake? We can't, can we? So, uh, anyway, it doesn't look like we're going to get our delivery of food today. Hopefully we've got enough stock in 
to allow us to actually open the restaurant but somebody's going to get an absolute slag in tomorrow and then uh, get a message from the cleaner oh, I've taken your back door key home by mistake I'll drop it off later on well the back door key ring has the front door keys on as well so not only we'll probably have no food for anybody in the restaurant we can't let anybody in the restaurant either fortunately a cleaner dropped the key off in time we're not open yet so that's a problem which uh, has been solved pretty quickly and then at that very moment when she dropped the key off this woman on a bicycle comes up to the door and asks do you sell any port scratchings We're like yeah of course we do can I buy some off you she goes yeah sure how many do you want four packets large ones please right apparently nowhere in town has any port scratchings I mean what is this country going to have a run on next if we're <laughs> panic buying pork scratchings for crying out loud? Oh, it goes from bad to worse, doesn't it? Anyway, I just thought I'd share that little experience with you. That was like one of the maddest half hours that I've had whilst I've worked here, to be fair. All these crazy things just came together and made me think, wow. The world has gone mad. Panic buying port scratchings, locking people into their own gardens, walking keys, and uh, failed deliveries. That'd be a long drawn out title for this video, wouldn't it? Anyway, stop rabbiting, boy. Let's go in and see how Gemma's getting on with this casking. So, what we're doing today is taking out POC, yes. proof of concept, out of the tank into a combination of cask and keg which Gemma's already kindly cleaned for us and uh, filled all done isn't it yeah. all filled and done and sorted these need all turning over one more time we're not desperate for these until tomorrow are we well, tomorrow, so we can probably let these have another 48 hours 24 hours at least of uh, cleaning before I rinse the HyperQuest out of them and uh, get them into circulation. They need a good scrub though, so I'll probably do that here while they're all on this wet section. Give them all a squirt with a hose pipe, get the Brillo pad out, clean them up before we start using them proper. Thank you.